When we lack vision, it is dangerous. The Bible does say to us in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 29, verse 18, and it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Wow. It is also a, stat, a sad state of being. Helen Keller, a famous blind and deaf social activist, had this to say. She said, the most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but lacks vision. Wow. How much more a spiritual leader. So how can we develop a God-given vision? How does a spiritual leader uh, envision the future? So let's look now at how inspirational vision can be developed in our own lives. Firstly, we need to understand that it is seeded by holy discontent. Now, Bill Heibel coined this term, holy discontent. And by that, he means something of God that stirs in our hearts and making us dissatisfied with the status quo. God may give us a discernment of the issues, the problems. Uh, he helps us see why it is a problem and why it must be addressed. Nehemiah was so dissatisfied that he volunteered himself to address the problem. There, were, there can be many people who may be at similar points in their uh, perspective. But if they just remain there, they may become complainers and whingers, just complaining about the issues and eventually become thorns to leaders' sides. But those who manage to reach the other side will begin to reach the God-inspired possibility. They are the ones who will begin to uh, gain a holy aspiration. They are the ones who begin to gain a holy vision. And so inspirational vision occurs when the, those with holy discontent moves to gain holy aspirations. Wow. What else do we need? It is also centered by aligning with God's vision. You see, it is not enough for a leader to have just vision, a personal vision. Alignment is critical if we are to move with God and with one another. When a leader's vision is properly aligned, it, it leads to greater synergy and, and greater outcomes. So God should be first and foremost in our vision process.